This is the Grundig P37-830 text. Despite the model name having 37 in it, it's in fact 34 centimeters in size, that is the tube. The text refers to the fact that the television has teletext installed. The tube is slightly curved four by three in its aspect ratio. And naturally it has a SCART in the back, it's a Grundig. And right now the GameCube is running via RGB SCART into the TV. This is bonk on the GameCube. Not sure on the date on this model. At least mid 90s, if not late 90s, possibly early 2000s. The television comes in a range of different colors. This one in front of us is the Kosa Orange. There's also the Ambia Blue. This is the Ambia Blue. I've owned this one in the past. Light green, can't find any pictures of that one. There's a red one here, and there's also a yellow model. Last, and probably least, is the Yagana Grey. I'm not 100% sure that this is the matching remote. This is the Telepilot 715, and it's suggested in the service manual that it is the correct matching one. However, it's not working for me. I think it's faulty. Instead, I've reverted to another, the Telepilot 850C, and that seems to be working. On the front of the TV, we have this dome button for the power, an LED to indicate whether the TV is on or off, a infrared port receiver, volume down and up, channel down and up, and a headphone jack. The front of the TV has a very nice shape. It's very flush to the tube itself and curves with the tube. All P37 models are in two-tone colors, the back being a silver gray and the front being whatever color it is. There's a carry area on the top here, an alcove for a hand to go in, for easy access to the television to take to Smash Brother tournaments if you're into that thing. On the back we have our label, Grundig P37, 220 to 240 volts, made in Austria. Chassis is CUC 7303. Our connections on the bottom involve a RF connector for antennas and game consoles. Euro AV socket that accepts RGB or composite video. Finally, a power socket figure eight. The common figure eight lead can plug into that. Grundig's designs never include a hard wire cable. Not around this year anyway. Pretty basic inside. Look at the notch on the neck board to fit that lead in. It's a little tricky. Down here, there's a trimmer that's accessible through one of those holes there. In the service manual, there are a couple of trimmers on the chassis used to adjust white balance. And it says just to adjust them by eye. You don't need a specific electronic tool to measure the values. Just do it by eye. There's our flyback with screen and focus adjustments there on the side that can be done. Going to the tube. Not surprising to see that it is a Philips made in Spain, 34 centimeters in size. Again, pretty simple looking chassis, not a lot of parts on it. Imagine if they made it now in 2022, how small the chassis could be with modern electronics. To access the service menu, it is necessary to hold down the I button on the remote while the television is off. Then turn it on. Still holding I on the remote. There we are. We are in the service mode. AGC, automatic gain control, often used in electronic systems. Not totally sure what it does. It may compensate for a weak RF signal. OSD, horizontal and vertical, is to steer the on-screen display, whether it is the service menu OSD or the TV's own regular menu system. You can scroll it out of the way from some important image underneath if you need to. Hotel mode is to restrict what the television can do. For example, if I turn it to on now, whatever the volume level is currently on the television, say it was a quarter of the way up, it would then no longer go any higher. It's in order to prevent hotel guests from turning the volume up too loud or doing things with the television they shouldn't. Decode is a good one. Decoder on enables pin A to the SCART socket to accept a voltage and then automatically turn the television from, say, a regular channel to the AV channel, which is the SCART 
socket. For example, if I turn the GameCube on with its SCART cable connected into the TV, it'll automatically switch the television over to the GameCube. Remote control, don't know what that does. Blue screen on, turns a snowy picture to a blue screen almost immediately. Program name displays the channel name as to what you've named it on the screen. Don't know what that option does. And the last one's also a good one. When you turn your television on, you can choose whether it's the AV channel is displaying, that, that is the SCART socket, or regular television channel, P1, channel one. To get out, you just press I and you're out. I'll go to channel two. To tune in channels is a little bit cryptic, so I figure it should be good to mention here. Hold down the AUX AUX button, auxiliary. Hold it down for four seconds, and that comes up. And then you can press OK, and the television will start to tune the channels in automatically, the old analog signal. As for the TV's own menu system, it's very, very basic. Press I and OK. It almost looks like a cryptic service menu display here. I think you can tune in your channels, maybe name your channels to what you want. Very, very basic. I don't even see a contrast adjustment or a brightness adjustment. Those can be done on the remote as such with purpose-made buttons for the job. Teletext is available. Not that I think that's running at all anymore. You can get out of that. The TV has been put on its side. It's in tape mode. I thought it may lay back far more than it is right now. It's upright quite well. Quite stable, quite suitable for the tape. Let's have a little game. Let's have a quick go. Oh, how do we do this? Well, there we go. It's going well. I could sit here and play this, but I don't want to bore you all. Once again, we're in the 240p test suite, this time on the GameCube, straight into the grid. It's a little to the left and a little too much upwards. As mentioned earlier, or if I didn't mention it, there are no controls for geometry. You cannot adjust horizontally the position or the size and the same for vertical aspect as well. There is a kink in the corner of the squares all over and there's a little bit of wobbling up in that top left corner, even down in the bottom right here. The television needs a tune up. It needs a fix up to get those things right. It's always interesting to look back on games from the past to find things that you weren't aware of. Let's turn that down a little bit. In the options here, screen display, this mode here. On, display will be smoother and softer. Off, display will be sharper and harder. If I had to take a wild guess, I'd say that this mode here, this on, is 240p mode, and the off is 480i. Just at a guess, just at a wild guess, I'd say that's what's going on. Keep in mind the TV's got a bit of wobble in it, as I pointed out before. We'll leave it on. I'll go to training. I want to see a nice stage. Oh, we'll go Falcon. So give him some support so we can get another F Zero game. We'll go to a colourful stage. That Kirby one will do. So here you go. I'll finish off the video now by saying that it's not a bad little television. It would be ideal for a Smash Brothers tournament. It's very light. It's a CRT. It has no lag. It has SCART. You can play an RGB. You can use your PAL or your NTSC consoles and you'll have no problems at all. The one little disappointing thing I think is no geometry adjustment to center the screen. I think Grundig were a bit tight in their budget on that one by omitting the controls for that. Otherwise, it's a pretty good TV. Quite uncommon, but I do recommend it. Since when do I not recommend a Grundig for that matter? Thank you for watching. Keep tuning in and see you in the next video.